Guys, the Anycubic auto feeding system. I have some bad news and then I've got some good news as well. The bad news is, is that the Anycubic auto feeding system itself doesn't work. The good news however is, is that I managed to redesign the part that has given us the problems. Which makes the system function as intended. So I already posted quite a few videos on this auto feeding system. And my previous solution was to use this little cardboard washer that comes with the Anycubic resin bottles. And you would put it in the Anycubic cap and that would supposedly help a little bit. But let me just show you how that this cap does not work. Just like that. So that we've got one. And remember, I have two of these now because I had any cubic send me a replacement one. Yeah, the cap just doesn't hold. And let's just do it into a different bottle as well. So, previous one was ABS like resin. ABS like resin is again. And let's do another bottle. This is basic resin bottle, so let's put it in here. Oh, this one's complete, look at that. We have one more, and we've got a standard resin bottle. I cut this one out, I'll show you why in a bit. The thread just skips completely. Basically, that means that the pump cannot get pressure. So basically these caps are too flimly, too loose, and they just completely skip the thread. However, it isn't a problem with the bottles themselves. So here we have the original caps of any cubic resin bottles. And if we tighten the cap, it's nice and tight. You can't skip that at all. Same here. Doesn't skip the thread at all. So yeah, I redesigned these caps. And I've got three different models here. So one comes with uh, the air rod built in and the other one you screw in the original rod from the original auto feeding unit. So I made quite a few improvements upon this uh, auto feeding system design. The cap itself, so mine are is that it's tight, it's much more rigid, it's sleek proof, airtight and mine has labels on it so you can see the pump side is here and the bottom side has got a vat on it, so it's clearly labelled. And I included one more item that I designed as well, and this is an upside down bottle feeder. So this obviously works with the cap itself, and that lets you use every single drop of resin that is in the bottle. So these files are going to be up on my Etsy and you're going to get the five different files. So you're going to get the upside down bottle feeding stand, you're going to get this cap without the rod, and this cap with the rod built into it and they're both going to come each pre-supported and non-supported and obviously these caps are meant to be printed in resin whilst this is printed with an FDM printer also just to clarify this rod is here for the pump so as you can see it's got pump written on it so you connect the tube that goes to the pump on this side the pump would push or pull the air to create negative or positive pressure so when it's upside down the air will go to the very very top so I have been using my new system for over a few months now and what I noticed comparing to the original auto feeding system which is like this there is a lot of leftover resin when you use the original auto feeding system when it does work and this is because you can clearly see that at the bottom of the bottles you can see that the rods cannot reach the very bottom so after doing multiple tests of how much resin I got left over in these bottles Without the cap, without any cardboard uh, washers on top, just the resin inside and the bottle, it would weigh around 206 grams. And if you weigh a completely empty bottle, it's 80 grams. So 206 minus 80 grams equals 126 grams of resin that has not been pumped into the vat, which wastes resin and wastes your time. So for example, here in this bottle, I finished this using the original auto feeding system after I got it to work and um, so this, there's still resin left over from uh, using this and now if I wanted to make use of it, I would have to do this. So I've got a print going here right now. I would have to get this bottle and hold it over the corner 
until all the resin pours into the vat. Which is time consuming and uh, impractical really because now I'm just going to stand here and just wait until it all drips out. So yeah, creates a lot of time waste and um, it could also actually affect the print itself because now I'm introducing more resin at a very high flow rate. However, if you use my system, since the bottle is upside down and the pump would be pushing the air out of this hole, which is here where it says the pump side, and you see that little hole here, which goes to this vat, that's where the resin would come out as it drips down, as the bottle is upside down, it would go out the vat side. So this way, you can ensure that is 100% of the resin emptied from each bottle. And I weighed multiple bottles after using my system, which totals to 80 grams of uh, multiple bottles that I've used. So it would be upside down like this using my system. And uh, the final weight of the bottle would be 80 grams. And I repeated this with multiple bottles and it works pretty flawlessly, which means zero resin is wasted and your time as well, which is great. I do recommend having the bottle lower than the vat. So you see the vat is here and we have the bottle here. I also tried placing it at a higher point like this. However, due to the gravity being slightly higher than the vat, when the pump is not engaged, the resin can trickle down into the vat when you don't want it to. However, if you place it on the floor like this, you won't really have any problems. Also, if you would like to see the flow of resin, I do recommend maybe using two clear tubes on both sides because that way you can see what's happening with the resin, if it's flowing in or out. Also to add on to my previous videos that I've done about the order feeding system, if you have a large print on the way and you want to make sure that it's 100% functional, at the start of a print, do make sure that auto feeding is enabled. Scroll down in the menu all the way down and set auto feed speed to 100%. And keep an eye on the clear tubes and wait for the resin to be pushed out. And once you see that it's working, turn the auto feed speed back to 20. Because uh, although you won't overflow the vat, you don't want it too full at the same time. Uh, it does have a sensor with the two little pins that go into the vat, which just passes the current through the resin. And if, and if a current is passed, it basically detects that, oh, wait, it's too full, let's stop filling it. One thing that you will need is slightly longer M3 screws. So these are around 13 millimeters. And that will be for the checking if the resin is present or not. So you would connect one side like that and screw it in. And it's pre-threaded into the model, so it screws in very nicely. And let's do the other side. One thing that I don't really like about this is that the wire is very, very short. I actually extended mine. And a great thing is that you don't really need any super glue, any Loctite, because resin is rather thick and this doesn't let any resin pass. So, hooray about that, huh? So two of these M3 bolts pass a single through them and if a connection is made by resin touching on the inside it says hey we got resin but when that connection is broken it basically sends a signal to the printer saying that hey we're out of resin refill and the tubes are pretty self-explanatory so let's connect one side to one and the other side to the other so where it says pump we get the tube and we would connect it to this side of the pump and the other side where it says that, obviously it will go here. So through this little connection point, there actually isn't anything happening. The pump is pushing the air through this and this is just letting the resin flow through this. So this is ready to go. We've got the tubes connected and the resin sensor wire has been connected. Now we will just screw it on. Screw it on like that. Tight and this time, look, we're gonna do it tight and it won't lose the thread. And for this, we can just put the wires through that little hole, you see that? And have them standing like that. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to purchase these files, they will be up in my Etsy and a link will be in my description as well. So yeah, very happy with this design. This is actually good. This is very bad. Very, very bad at any cubic. What are you doing? Thanks for watching guys, till the next time. Okay, so as we can see, we've got the cap printed.
Okay, so before I start removing the supports, I am going to put the cover on my resin printer back on. This is just in case any any of the supports that are removed so they don't fly off. So let's remove them. Quite simple. Uh, the supports are pretty uh, thick, so you need to be quite careful. And I'm just uh, using gloves and my fingertip basically. So far I haven't needed to use the tweezers, but if I do, I've got them right next to me and I'm just going to grab it like that and twist it slightly. There we go. And the inside looks pretty clean, pretty straightforward. And now we just put it in the IPA bar and let it sit there for 20 minutes. Well, at least that's how I do it. Give it a nice stir and clean it with a brush. Got that, that, that. And let's put it in the IPA bar. And I'm just gonna leave it for a bit. Okay, and we have the second model, and this one is with the actual pump rod. So instead of actual having to screw in the metal rod, this one comes built in. Um, and you can see it is printed as one piece. So let's get this off the bed. So this is just an alternate version in case uh, you guys um, don't have the rod, as I mentioned. So where's my scraper? Here's my scraper. Okay, so we can see the supports here, very clean. These supports are, I think, set to 0 0.6 contact. And they come off very easily. And it looks like it's printed pretty perfectly. And this rod is just there. So, oh, this one's, these supports are a bit harder. So yeah, this rod is only there for uh, creating the pressure. So the pump pushes air out of this tube, which creates more pressure. Now these supports are a bit tighter, so it's a bit harder to remove them. But yeah, these are... Uh, files are going to come with an unsupported one as well in case you guys want to support it yourself but yeah, for these since uh, I print this 100% solid I do have the supports rather uh, dense not dense but thick because if I reduce the supports it will detach during print because I don't hollow this model out I want this cap to be strong I'm going to close the printer just in case any parts go flying. I don't want them flying into the mat. Just got my little tweezers, my little pliers. Let's just get the supports on that. See, that makes the supports come off instantly. Might want to do it over a bin. Oh, see, they want flying a little bit. But these bottom ones are the, are the thickest ones. But the rod is the key part for it to function correctly. And the rod is necessary because when the resin bottle is upside down, when the pump retracts the air out of the bottle we don't want the resin going into the pump so as uh, so as the pump pulls air from this the resin sits below it whilst if the rod wasn't there if there was just a hole there the resin would go into the pump but yeah that's pretty much it guys this is there there's a little support there to me to fill up fill up this looks great I'm gonna put it into the IPA wash, clean it up, then I'll come back to you guys. This looks good, very good. Now, one thing that I did do for the sake of uh, testing this 
is uh, refilling. So my auto feed speed is 100%. So you can see it's right up to the edge. But you can also see that if we look at the tube, it's been retracted, so nothing else is pouring. So it's doing its job correctly. But like I said, for the sake of experimentation and just check functionality that it doesn't overflow, it does stop when it's supposed to. So you can see there's, it's not dripping when it's not supposed to. Uh, but yeah, this is an extreme case scenario because I'm on 100% auto feed speed. So this won't happen if you have your auto feed speed to say the normal 20%. But even at 100%, it's not overflowing. It's right up to the border, to a scary, scary amount. Like, look at it. But it's not overflowing. It kind of should be overflowing, to be honest. So don't have your auto feed speed on 100% all the time. I am only doing this for experimentation. <laughs> I think after this, I'm going to change the uh, auto feed speed back to 20%, I think. 